here's another conspiracy. Ugh, you guys, it's exhausting. Aren't you exhausted? Anyone to go and have like a slew of medical issues. Like I, I don't think this type of speculation is healthy. Speculating someone's health, like I'm, you guys confused? Imagine how I was feeling. Anyway. I'm just terribly bored with all the Welcome to Aren't You Exhausted, the podcast, where we deep dive into the lives of Amberlynn Reed and Foodie Beauty. These two internet personalities have become household names for their kind of controversial weight loss journeys and methods of gaining fame here on YouTube. Join us as we analyze the lives of these two women and their impact on the internet community. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Aren't You Exhausted? The podcast. I am your host, Ashley, and on this Friday night, we are going to be discussing Foodie Beauty's now-deleted Community Rager. She went on earlier today and going over her recent live streams, leaving out any of the discussion on her video uploads as, honestly, they're not as interesting. We are also going to touch on Amber Lynn Reed's recent video uploads, looking into her audio interviews as she calls them, and talking a little bit about her Q&As from her Instagram that are noteworthy. So let's just get right into it. I'm going to start with Foodie Beauty. I'm going to start out by saying purely in speculation and with no hard evidence to prove one way or another, but I believe old girl has found herself back on indulging in some special substances again. We are getting similar behavior from her as we witnessed in Canada, but now happening in Kuwait. That's lovely for her. I'm sure it won't have any negative or lasting consequences. <laughs> so she started out her day going after those bringing up BBJ. I'm assuming this was after feverishly watching an FFG or Yaba live stream. She called those who view her as an animal abuser through neglect as self-righteous zombies who are so concerned with the well-being of BBJ, but not calling out the fact that FFG hasn't shown any videos of her being happy or taken care of, only a close-up of a Gucci collar on what she claimed was a poorly groomed mat of fur. She went also went out to spit out that she knows for a fact that BBJ is living with FFG because the Amy Flowers person admitted they lived in California. I don't know. I don't know either way. I don't know how truthful that is. I don't know where she heard that from. Who knows? She then goes on to sling around her venom towards FFG's late pets which she herself doesn't have the whole story on. She only regurgitates what she reads from her Beezers or what she's told from her Beezers. Fact of the matter is, only FFG truly knows what happened to her pets, and the fact that the one person spouting all of this nonsense gave her beloved elderly pet to a stranger that she didn't vet out <laughs> due to an oversight, I'm sure. The same with the UTI and the matting and the ingrown nails, <laughs> or the fact that the cat was known to have kidney issues and nail issues that had been previously spoke on in March of 2022 in an earlier live stream. And she still tried stating that it was an oversight, but she also did no kind of insurance that this person would take care of her beloved elderly cat that she loves so much that she had to repeatedly say that it, if it had to be given medication for the remainder of her life, she would rather just euthanize her. That same love she had for her pet, she didn't make sure that this person she was giving BBJ to had a long-standing vet or a vet reference at the very least to be made to acknowledge that they had a plan of care for this elderly cat. That according to Chantal was at death's door, you know, because it was old. She later brings up the fact that the animal control was called many times and many times over, found that the cat was to be healthy. But what she fails to mention is 
Animal control only makes sure the animal is living and breathing and has food and water available and makes sure that the home is livable. And I mean, if that, in many cases, they don't even step foot into your home. They just ask questions, ask to see a visual of the animal. And so animal control stopping by three different times and saying nothing was wrong, it's not really a good representation of what was actually going on and even less (laughs) of of an indication of what was going on with the cat. And even at the last check, this wasn't long before she came back to Canada. So they didn't look at the paw pads at all. That's what we can gain from this, as they would have seen the overgrown nails at that point, which just solidifies. Animal control only does a once over and that's good enough for them. So of course, there's going to be just good marks. They just see an elderly cat. An elderly cat's not going to look in the best shape or sound in the best shape. I also don't understand her outrage at this as to where her elderly cat has stayed relatively with the same person this entire time, gotten vet care, gotten luxury cat items like the catio and the Gucci collar that she had never had before, gotten regular brushings, and Sam has been passed around from the sounds of Chantal to a few different people in this time and is still kind of in limbo for a permanent home. If she'd actually have vetted people that wanted her cats, she wouldn't be stuck in another country stewing over the fact that she doesn't know what's going on with her cats and wishing she wasn't known as the cat neglect and abuser by thousands, which prevent her from adopting one of the many stray cats in Kuwait because honestly, I don't think anybody would let her live it down. She'd much rather go out there and just nab a kitten or a cat off the street than, you know, going to an adoption agency there in Kuwait to adopt a fully vetted cat. And I did, I took it upon myself to browse a few different places in Kuwait, one being the Kitty Love Kuwait organization. And they had some adorable cats and kittens for adoption. But you would think that a woman spends most of her day online and on her phone. She'd do some research, but obviously that's not going on in this woman's head. She'd rather rage at people and investigate what is being said about her. When we got to the discussion during a live stream of her backpedaling on calling Gorlick Bread a leprechaun and how it's not racist because she's half Irish... Now, apparently on some of the seedier areas of the internet, on places we will not name, someone did a little bit of digging and found her great-grandfather's obituary. And it turns out Chantal isn't even one-eighth Irish on her mother's side. Not to mention Chantal has never been heard claiming to be Irish until this incident. Go figure. Along with all of the craziness being spewed on her community tab, she also decided to post regarding her travel back to Canada, the possibility of renting a place for a while, as she took legal action against FFG and small claims court, touting one way or another FFG will pay. I mean, isn't she already paying? She's paying to take care of your elderly cat, Chantal that you didn't want to bother with elderly cat care for and would rather put her down than be inconvenienced or lose out on Arabic? Is it Arabic dick? Or Syrian, sorry, Syrian dick. When we got to the bottom line live stream featuring a heated Chantal and her paid hype man, this was just a half-hearted rage stream. Not as glorious as times earlier this year, but what can we really expect? Chantal raged about FFG, took drags from the shisha, giggled with Sala over jabs taken at FFG, and Shannon, and Just Breezin, and T and Sass, and a few other reaction channels. The stream ended with a back and forth between Chantal and Sam Teflar, which instantly Chantal went to bringing kids into the conversation because... I mean, what other ammo does she have beyond attacking someone's looks, their age, or their children? She then went on to make a crazy claim that she would fight if Kuwait ever went to war, which, okay, that's pretty comical, to say the least. This woman can't even walk 20 feet 
without having a heat stroke. So I hope war is in the winter months and at night for her sake. <laughs> so now on to Amber Lynn. Amber Lynn has been posting rather frequently, all of course, at least a week out from her, like the current day. She apparently has a good amount of backlogged content that she has to be uploaded, as she says, chronologically, stating in her defense, a lot of vloggers do this. Nothing is recorded the day of or the day before. I mean, okay, I don't know for sure. All the vloggers that she follows, so I can't state how true or false that statement is. But in my opinion, nothing said today will be relevant from a week ago. Things change way too fast, especially in Amber's universe. She could be diagnosed with PTSD on a Friday, and by the following Friday, find out it was brought on by baked goods sent through her P.O. box that totally didn't cause her to binge because she doesn't have a binge eating disorder anymore. You know, things like that. Amber has also gotten some recent hate due to her pushing for viewers to send her things to her P.O. box, and people are sending her, I mean, rather useless things that cost them their hard-earned money, especially in this economy, and those things will likely be donated to Goodwill because she makes more money than them and can afford to get things that she wants and not these weird-ass things people send her that will clutter her aesthetic home. Of course, she goes on to act thankful, but... In the back of my mind, I'm like, yeah, show us that Goodwill pile in a week, Amber. <laughs> Amber is also recently diagnosed, has recently been diagnosed with having a hernia. She didn't specify what type of hernia she had. And she told us that this testing had been done roughly a month ago for her weight loss surgery requirements. And of course, it took her reaching out to them to ask what the results were because she saw a new hump appeared on her stomach when laying down, which, how the hell did she see a lump on her stomach from a lying down position? Can she even lay down flat with her shelf ass? I mean, I'm seriously asking, does anyone know if someone can lay flat on their backs with a shelf ass, and could she even see the entirety of her stomach from a lying down position? <sighs> Inquiring minds want to know. Also, Amber goes on to discuss how she doesn't glorify obesity. She's bringing light to all the complications that come with obesity and how she does not advocate for health at every size, as she doesn't feel obese people can be healthy. And this isn't fat phobic of her because it's science. I mean, we already know how she feels about other fat bodies. She has openly said how she compares herself to other fat bodies and feels wronged by them not having the or for having the audacity to not be trying to lose weight because she's the poster child of stable weight loss and health you know she knows nutrition y'all and you best believe she knows it better than these people sitting at the same restaurant as her eating the same food as her you know <laughs> now amber has also shined some light on her moving plans She's not going to share the location she's planning on moving to, but she's still, like, planning for that future. After she's lost enough weight for travel, of course. She hasn't really specified what that, that line's going to be. Is it 100 pounds? Is it 200 pounds? Is it her goal weight that she has to meet before she's okaying herself to travel? But apparently Amber is not rich enough to buy two seats and ask for a seat belt extender and then rent an SUV. She's not that type of rich to be able to visit family. I also love that for so long Amber's excuse for not visiting with her mom and family is due to her own restrictions on travel, but not her family's. Are all of her family members felons and can't leave the state? Like what is that logic? That's the only thing I can come up with that I would believe. But the fact that none of her family can visit her, even on Amber's dollar, because we know, we know Amber is paying for that travel. We know she's paying for that ticket. We know she's paying for, like, it's all expenses paid for with Amber if you're going to come and visit her. Her family can't come visit. We know Jade's family comes and visits, at least from what she's said. But, like, her family can't? <laughs> I don't I don't get it. They get no vacation days. They don't get like if they have a job, they're allotted vacation days. Like they have to give you 
time off. You don't just get a job and like there's no time off. Amber brought up about her past trolling as well and how it was lighthearted, not bringing up at all the times that she would start a new diet and end it in the very next day with a fast food meal mukbang or eat with me as she sometimes refers to them. I mean, it should be a smack in the face to her that she's went from her claimed highest weight of 570 something pounds to what is it? 530, 528. She's gained back most of her weight that she worked so hard to lose after her cancer diagnosis and treatment. The fact that she let a sprained ankle and pulled ligaments throw her into a defeatist attitude and just ate her feelings when she's preaching to others via her interview segments to learn other ways of coping to not want to binge and overeat. Like, maybe say that to yourself. Maybe have that a mantra for yourself. Preach to your own choir. Swallow your own medicine. You know, that kind of thing. You can't give people (laughs) that type of information when you can't even take that information in yourself. Like you're not some you're not somebody that should be giving that type of advice. People shouldn't be asking you for advice on weight loss because it's obvious. You may know what needs to be done, but you're not doing it. On Amber's Q&A from her Instagram. She claims time and time again that people just find anything to hate her for, and no other YouTubers get that same hate. What YouTubers are you talking about? YouTubers get hate just for breathing. Not everyone is going to love your content, especially watching a good majority of a 500-pound woman's weight loss journey, being having trolling mukbangs, and having a new ailment or disease or disorder each time she uploads a video. I mean, she even is still claiming her sleep schedule is out of whack. She wakes up late, goes to bed late, and still has to use melatonin gummies to sleep. She will literally do anything besides go and have a sleep study done to determine if she has sleep apnea or not. It's not taboo. You're 500 pounds. You're 5 foot 3 or 5 foot 2. You're short. And you you have an awkward sleep schedule. And you sleep awkward because of how your weight is distributed. Color me shocked if she doesn't turn out to have any form of sleep apnea, but it's likely she does. And I get that she has a twinge of embarrassment or whatever because she's claimed to not have it for so long that if it came out that she did have it, people would give her shit about it. But it's time to grow up and think about your health, that this is just another thing on her list of things that she does or doesn't do for the sake of what people on the internet will think of her. That's that's my opinion on that. Anyhow. I think that is it for me tonight. Thanks for joining me on tonight's episode. Thanks for listening. And I hope you all have a great weekend. Until next time, I'm your host, Ashley. I will see you guys next time. Bye.